we've talked about prayer of faith and so forth, and we'll, we'll go back to the, to the Gospel of John. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. <clears throat> and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, he will take of mine and show it unto you. Oh. All things that the Father has are mine. He'll take what's mine and the Spirit will take what's mine and show it to you. Yes. <laughs> He's the Spirit of truth and that sounds too good to be true, but it is the truth. Amen. Jesus also said, And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free, not set you free. It will make you free. Because the book has the authority to make you free. <clears throat> Young man by the name of Jimmy Hester, he was <clears throat> had bad heart. And my mother had a prayer group. This is after she got delivered of fear in that CFO camp. I mean, she was dangerous. And she just turned into a, a different person. That spirit of fear was gone. Yeah. And they brought him in there. And uh, <clears throat> one, of, one of Jimmy's friends brought him in there. And she said... Uh, something to Jimmy, and he said, well, my, my grandfather died of a bad heart, my dad died of a bad heart, and I have a bad heart now. Mm -hmm. She said, tell me the truth about that. Yeah. He said, well, lady, I, the, uh, my grandfather died of a bad heart, and my dad died of a bad heart, and I have a bad heart now. She said, I said, tell me the truth about that. Yeah. Well, he got a little... And uh, he said, well, lady, and before he could get it out, now Jimmy told me this. He said before she could get it out, she said, he said, she boxed my ears, said she slapped me upside the head. She said, I know she saw death on me. And she said, Isaiah 53, and that, that's the truth about that. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Come on. Amen. Jerry Savelle and I, Helped at his going home service. He was in his 80s. A new heart. That's the truth about that. And the truth made him free. The truth made him free. So, when you put those two things together, all that the Father has belongs to Jesus. Well, of course it does. But the, when the Spirit of God comes, he will take the things that are his and show them unto us. Now that brings us to the prayer of wisdom. So let's go to the book of James. <clears throat> James, a servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into different temptations, tests, and trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives, uh, gives to... Let him ask of God to give to all men liberally and upbraideth not 
and it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Well, what is a double-minded man? A man of two minds. Well, Peter said, Master, don't you care that we perish? In one word, he's master. Now, don't you care? That's good. He's, he's afraid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The double-minded man. So when you read in this little book, you read all the way through this, and uh, do not err, my 16th verse, and I err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He was referring to, referring to a sundial. The Romans invented that. Now, he's not about to change. Amen? Amen? Well, we're right here. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in all of his deed. Now, <clears throat> the Weymouth translation. Now, that is was out of print, so it is now... Uh, a KCM publication. So, and I'll tell you later how, why I like it so. <clears throat> Judged by the law of liberty for to give judgment without mercy. Now look here. What is the profit, my brethren, though a man say he shall have faith and has not work? In Weymouth, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and has not corresponding action? Isn't that good? corresponding action. Well, that, that gets rid of the word work. And it's good. So, number eight, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself, you do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors for whosoever is to keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. So, Read the whole thing, all right? Oh, it's just pregnant with revelation. Chapter five, go to now you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and you shall eat your flesh at war fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept by fraud, crieth, and cries of them have reaped entered into the ear of the Lord of Saboath. Not Sabbath. Saboath. The Lord of the angelic forces the Lord of hosts. That's interesting. Because that's in the book of Malachi concerning tithing, the Lord of hosts. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he've committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Uh, <clears throat> and the prayer of faith shall save faith in what? The name of the Lord. Well, I had, I had to go back and look at the, the different places where they did television to, to see how far back it went. Right here, I had a little white spot about the size of a grain of rice. But there, and um, I picked that a little bit and it got sore and festered up. <clears throat> so, 
So uh, I called my pastor. So Pastor George and Terry came over. John and Kelly were on the, on the phone together, family. Gloria and her good friend and uh, B.B., well, that, you know, her name is Brenda June, but everybody calls her B.B. Because her brother did. She called him boy. I thought she was saying Boyd. But she called him boy and he called her B.B. <laughs> anyway, she was there. And so, <clears throat> pastor came out and I held it out there like that. He read that scripture in his Bible. Took his oil bottle did this. And when he touched that, before I could think, I went, oh, that did it. Glory to God. So, I told Dr. Weeder here, I said, we need to go have this thing checked out. Went over, went in and took it in. Dr. Williams first dermatologist and just a magnificent man. He was, he was very dark, very dark and had a deep voice. And I like it when somebody got a deep voice. <laughs> I said, my name's Kenneth Copeland. He said, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> he said, my folks have been partners with you for I don't know how long. <laughs> so I got a, I got a partner guy. <laughs> So he checked it out. He said, yeah, it's malignant. So, well, so what? So he said, send me over to another guy. So we went in there. David and I went in there. They came in and said, well, now, Mr. Copeland, you probably have to wait. How, how long did they say? 30 minutes to two hours? Because doctor is going to uh, open that up and he's gonna shave and, and keep doing that until there are no malignant cells. So, well, I don't know, well, 30 or 40 minutes, I guess she came out and she said, Mr. Copeland, you are a very lucky man. There are no more malignant cells. I, no, I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. Right. He sewed it up. Yeah. You can't, you can no. hardly see it. I got a testimony. Yeah. Then when little Lindsay, Kelly's, Rachel was first and then Lindsay. And Christmas morning, she was 11 years old. Oh, my, 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 my. They went up. We were in Colorado. And, uh, and I don't know. I don't even remember why they... Uh, the, the airplane wasn't there, so I couldn't fly it back. I, they were doing maintenance or something. I don't know what it was. And called and said, you better get here quick. Said, Lindsay's been diagnosed with Nicerian meningitis. And there's already been some, she's at Cook's Children's Hospital, and there's already been some, some children that have died. So I got on the airplane. They came and picked me up. So I just got in there and started praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit all the way home. And found out what to do. We got in there late. They put all that hazmat gear on us. That stuff is terribly uh, contagious. I walked up there. I was standing here. I said, Lindsay, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the anointing on the inside of you to put this disease out and off of you. She said, Papa, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> now she's the wife of a fine medical doctor I married them, and, and he was 
let's see, Alex, I think he, I think he was born in Mexico City. But anyway, they have a little girl now named Colette, and she just turned three. What a Christmas present. That's the way this works. Well, then we, we drove in from Tulsa to preach there, and I came up in my mother's kitchen there, and I was tired. Drove that old beat-up car, and... Um, Phone rang. Now, there were two sisters. One of them named Eileen Riggins, and the other one, Annie Johnson. And they were they were they were kin to my grandmother on the Owens side. And so, Aubrey, Pastor George's daughter, had named her oldest girl, Ily, after her. Anyway, I said, Mother, fix me some scrambled eggs. I'm hungry. So she did. And she said, Kill of Ily's about to die. We got to hurry. Mother, I'm sweaty, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change my shirt. Well, hurry up. <laughs> and I walked back there and this is when I heard the Lord say, don't you ever let the devil see you sweat. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, you slow down. I came back in there. She said, Kenneth, will you hurry up? I said, no. I said, you drive and don't get in a hurry. Praying the spirit all the way over there. They got in there, and Lois, her daughter, was at the planning the funeral. I said, Lois, put the phone down. But kind of, I said, Lois, they put her in there to wait for the doctor to come by and sign the death certificate. I said, Lois, put the phone, please put the phone down. She said, so the Lord told me what to do with her. And so, and of course, my mother just, I mean, that's her aunt. And uh, I walked over there, and my mother said, and she was always thin, just, just a sweet Southern Baptist saint of God. <laughs> and mother said, see that right there, it's just choking the life out of her. I walked over there. I touched her right there on the breastbone. I said, ain't hey, Ily open your eyes? She said, Kenneth, what are you doing here? I said, I came here to pray for you. Oh, she said, I appreciate that. <laughs> Lois said. So she left the death room and went home in her own home. So a little while later, two years later, the Lord said to my mother, you better go check on Eileen. So she went over there and she was in the living room in her easy chair. And mother said, Eileen, you think it's about time to go? Oh, yeah. She said, he's been right there waiting on me. She said, I told him you just need to wait a little while. Yeah, she said, I'm ready. She said, come on, I'll tuck you in. And so she tucked her in and mother said, Ali, just, just lay your head back and let it go. She said, thank you, Vanetta. She began to speak in tongues on the way out. Amen. And we're going to close with his prayer. 17th chapter of John. This prayer... I decided I was learning at ORU the power of agreement. I said, I'm going to, Father, I was in that little old room. I'm going to agree with this. This is Jesus praying.
These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified thee on the earth, and I've finished the work which you've given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of this world, thou were, and you gave them to me, and they've kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you've given me is of thee. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are thine. And all that are mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now, I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Listen to that. I kept them. Now, now we think about, well, you know, he's praying in the name. No. He said, I have kept them in your name. I've kept them in it. I have, the, the, the proverb says, uh, God's name is a great tower and climb up above it. He kept them inside the name. They weren't born again men yet. That didn't happen until the 20th chapter. Thou hast given me in the world, even so I've also sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Well, that's indirectly or indirectly, that's all of us. That they may be one, and thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me, and, and the glory which you have given me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, and they may be made perfect in me, in one, and that the world may know thou sent me and hast loved them as you loved me. I got hung up right there. I said, come on, you mean to tell me God loves me as much as he does Jesus? How could that be? My knees were shaking. I said I was gonna do this. And I said, I said you mean God loves me as much as he does Jesus? And I kept saying it, and I kept saying it, and kept saying it until my spirit got a hold of it. And I thought, well, of course he does. He gave him to get me. And you and all the rest of us on that cross. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me with me, where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I know thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. I have declared unto them your name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Whew. Study that prayer and agree with it. Yes. Study it. Study it verse by verse. And agree with it. And stand on it. Fight the good fight of faith with it. He is our master and our savior. He's our baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Join us for the Branson Victory Campaign with Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle, April 4th through the 6th. Register at kcm.org slash Branson today. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Today is offering day on the Believer's Voice of Victory. The Lord instructed Brother Copeland to give those watching the broadcast an opportunity to sow into the word of God they've heard and received this week. God reveals the benefits of sowing to the spirit in Galatians 6, 6 through 9. Let him who receives instruction in the word share all good things with his teacher, contributing in support. For whatever a man sows, that is what he will reap. Sowing to the flesh reaps destruction, but sowing to the spirit reaps eternal life. So let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we shall reap a harvest if we do not give up. 2 Corinthians 9.10 further reveals that God is the one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Thank you, partners, for your faithful giving and prayers. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland love and appreciate you and pray for you every day. Together with you and the faithfulness of Jesus, the word of faith is being preached from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle on every available voice. People across the globe are hearing the good news of the gospel and are being saved, healed, and delivered. You're a part of the word being preached through the BVLV broadcast, BVLV magazine, KCM.org, on social media, and at KCM events. As you sow your financial seed, let me pray for God's abundant provision and blessing. Father, on behalf of every sword today, we thank you for ministering to us the seed that we sow so that you can multiply it into an abundant harvest whereby we will not lack in any good thing. Thank you so much for increasing the fruit of your righteousness in us, for enriching us with all bountifulness, providing us all sufficiency in all things so that we can continually abound to every good work. You're so good to us, Father, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would like to become a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries, I want to welcome you to connect with us today at kcm.org slash partner. Join us as we continue to preach the word of faith and build the body of Christ in God's word to live in victory, spirit, soul, and body, financially, socially, in all areas of life. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time, this is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for sowing into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. To give by text, text the letters KCM to 36609.